So let's now deal with the loading indicator issue that we created for ourselves when we used the same loading flag for every single button. Now I'm not too concerned about using the same loading indicator for this submit button because we can only ever use this if we're creating an activity or we're editing an activity. So it's fine to use the same one in that case. And what we want to do though is isolate the individual button that we're clicking here so that we don't show loading indicators for all of them in this list. And let's see how we can do this. Now inside our activity list we have our delete activity button. And what we need to do is, is give this button a way of being identified. And what we can do is give this button a name property and we can set its name to the activity ID. And this way we guarantee that each button is going to be unique. But how do we use this name property? Well, our button has an onClick event handler. And what we can use is the event as a parameter that we can pass to our delete activity method. And this is React's original synthetic event. And more specifically, it's a React mouse event that's on a HTML button element. So let's go ahead and pass this event as an additional parameter that we pass to our delete activity method. And then from there, we'll be able to extract the name of the button that we're clicking on and set this as the, the target button that we want to activate when it's loading. But we'll need to pass the event up to our delete activity method. So I'm just going to say E and make sure we pass up the event as well. We're getting an error because now we're passing two arguments when we're only expected to pass one. So what we'll do is we'll go up to our app.tsx and inside our delete activity method we'll take a second parameter and we'll pass in the event as the first parameter and we'll need to give this a type and we already saw that this was a mouse event but this comes down from the react synthetic event so we can use the synthetic event as its type and we can specify that this is coming from an HTML button element. So what do we do with this? Well what we can do is we can add an additional piece of state in our component and I'm going to say const and target and set target equals use state and we'll just set this to an empty string because the target in this case is going to represent the button name which is really just going to be the name of the button that's been clicked and inside our handle delete activity when we receive this event from our method what we can do is set the target and we can set it to the event dot target dot name or in this case it needs to be current target so when we click on the delete button we're going to set the target to the name of the button which is effectively going to be the activity id and then we need to pass down the target to our activity form and once again that means passing it all the way down via our activity dashboard to our activity form and I'll specify target equals target and we've got an issue with our delete activity in our activity dashboard but that's because we've changed the signature of this particular function. So we'll need to add to the activity dashboard anyway and what we need to do is specify the delete activity is going to take a, another parameter and this is going to be our synthetic event and it's going to be an HTML button element and we're also going to add in here the target which is going to be a string and we'll need to pass down the target into our destructured props and we'll also need to pass the target down into our activity list and we'll say target equals target now our delete activity in our activity list also needs to be updated with the new signature for this function. So we'll head to our activity list 
and we'll update this to take the event which is going to be once again the synthetic event and HTML button element and we also need to pass in the target here as well and this is going to be the string and we also need to destructure this into our props here and what we can do then is we can go down to our delete button and we can specify that we're loading if the target is equal to the activity ID and we're submitting so I'll say target is equal to activity dot ID and we're submitting and what this does is this resolves both of our problems here because this loading flag is only going to be activated if we are deleting an activity and the button name matches this particular target which means this loading indicator will not be activated when we're editing an event or activity so let's go and make sure this has had the desired effect and I'll just refresh the page and if I click on delete future activity 3 we can see that we only see the loading indicator for that particular activity and if I click on to view an activity and I click on edit and I make a change and I click submit now we're only seeing the loading indicator on the submit button itself and we're not seeing it enabled for our delete as well so it's a bit of a pain to isolate the loading indicator to an individual button but it is something that we kind of need to do and this brings us to the end of this particular section so what we'll do is we'll just take a look inside our console see if there's anything that we need to clean up and in my case it looks like I've managed to get through a section without leaving anything in my console which is good and what you might also want to do is to reset the database depending on what you've added into your activities because now we're persisting data we might have some ugly looking events such as this for example that we might want to clean out of our database and because of the way we've set things up this is incredibly simple so I'm just going to close down all of my open windows and just tidy things up and go into my terminal window and what we need to do is go over to our API and just stop our API from running I'm just going to cd into the reactivities folder and what I'm going to do is say .NET EF drop database and I'll still need to specify the persistence project and the startup project and this is just going to drop my database it's going to delete it from my project and it will give me a confirmation saying am I sure and I've got the command the wrong way round this should be .NET EF database drop not drop database and press return and this should give me a confirmation say do I really want to do this and yes I do and then to get our database back because we're seeding our data and creating our database when we start our application all we need to do is cd into our API and say .NET watch run and when we do this this is going to recreate all of our activities from our seed.cs file and if I head back over to my browser and I just refresh the page we should find we're back to our original 10 activities now and that is indeed the case so what we also want to do because we're at the end of this particular section is save our changes into source control and I'm just going to stage these changes and then just say end of section six in this case and control return and then just push these up to github and we'll finish off this section with a short summary